Okay, we are in session number four of this first week. So we are ending the first week with the topic that we were developing yesterday that was not completed. So today we are going to complete the topic that is a simple pass. Then we are going to see another structure uh, for this uh, for this session. So in this case, we are going to see some structures that we are going to use in English. So we were talking about simple past. In that case, we were saying that the simple past is to talk about completed actions in the past. But also we were seeing the form of the simple past and also we were seeing the simple past uses. And in this case, we have use number one, that is the completed action in the past. Use number two, a series of completed actions. Use number three, that is the duration in the past. And now we are going to see use number four, use number five, and some tips. And then we are going to end the simple past tense, and we are going to see the other uh, tense that we are going to develop today. So we are going to see the use number four. Use four of the simple past, and it says, edit in the past. And it says the simple past can also be used to describe a habit which stops in the past. It can have the same meaning as used to. Um, we have an structure in English that is the used to. That is structure, uh, we can use it for uh, this kind of habit in the past that we are not doing in the present and stop in the past. Así que estamos diciendo que el simple past es muy parecido a lo que es el use to, que es también otra estructura que se utiliza para hablar de hábitos en el pasado que ya no suceden en el presente. To make it clear that we are making about, or that we are talking about a habit, we often add expressions such as always, often, usually, never, when I was a child, when I was, a, when I was younger. We have always, we have often, usually, never, when I was a child, when I was younger. So when we're talking about habits, we're going to use this kind of expression, expressions to make it clear that we are talking about something that we did in the past. 
When I was a child, I used to play with my friends at school. But now I am a adult and I am working and I don't have time to play. And I never eat fish in the past. But now maybe I eat fish some time. And we have the examples. I study French when I was a child. I study French when I was a child, but now I am not studying. Next one, he played the violin. But maybe now, he is not interested in violin and he uh, play another instrument or he is not playing at all. Number three, he didn't play the piano. Maybe in that case or in that moment, that person is not interested in piano, but now maybe that changed. Did you play a musical instrument when you were a kid? She worked at the movie theater after school. And the last one, they never went to school. They always skip class. So now I'm going to mark the verb and the structure. So there we have the verb that we are using to talk about the, the past habit that we have in some time in the past. Así que estamos hablando de los hábitos, ya que el simple past lo podemos utilizar para hablar de hábitos en el pasado, cosas que ya no realizamos o cosas que eh, nunca pensamos realizar y que tal vez ahora de adultos lo estamos haciendo. So we have the examples of all the things that we can say about the past. And also remember that in this case, we can uh, use this structure as the a structure of used to that is uh, related to talk about the, uh, the habits in the past. Then we have use number five, that is the last use for a this structure. And it's past past or generalization. And it says the simple past can also be used to describe past past or generalization 
which are no longer true. As in use for, this use of the simple verses, but similar to the expression used to. También la parte número 5, el uso número 5, es para describir cosas del pasado o generalidades que ya no son reales y que como en el uso número 4 es eh, verdad para muy parecida al use to. Se parece mucho al use to. Then we have the example. Number one, she was shy as a child, but now she is very outgoing. So in this sentence is saying something about uh, that girl that when she was uh, a child, she was very shy, but something changed, and now she is very outgoing. Entonces, eh, de pequeña era tímida, that is the word, tímida, pero ahora es bastante sociable, ¿verdad? Que les gusta mucho eh, socializar o conversar con las personas. So, in that case, it's something that is no longer true. So, number two, he didn't like tomatoes before. He didn't like tomatoes before. But now maybe he enjoys eating um, tomatoes. Did you live in Texas? When you were a kid? And the last one, people pay much more to make cell phone calls in the past. Because now it's very easy to uh, give a cell phone call. Now it's cheaper than in the past. So that is something that has changed through the time. So we have five uses for the simple past. And now we are going to talk about some important tips. And it says that uh, we have a win clause that happened first. And it says, clauses are a group of words which have meaning, but are often not complete. Some clauses begin with the word when, such as when I dropped my pen. Or when class began, these clauses are called when clauses. And they are very important. When clauses are important because they always happen first, when both clauses are in the simple past, both of the examples that we have, that one is when I paid, I paid her one dollar, she answered my question. And then we have the other example that says, she answered my question when I paid her one dollar. And in this example, we are talking about that there is a clause that is the when clause, that is the one that happens at the beginning, because we are talking about the past, Utilizamos el when I was a child, 
I did something. Cuando era un niño, yo solía hacer ciertas actividades. But there is something eh, external to the topic. So, now we are going to change the tense and we are going to talk about past continuous. Estamos hablando del simple past, ahora vamos a hablar del pasado continuo. And we are going to change. Topic. Past continuous. So this one, it says, um, the past continuous is made from the past tense of the verb be and the ing form of a verb. Este, eh, o esta estructura, la vamos a construir con lo que es el, el pasado del verbo y el ing. El ing en español es el gerundio, siendo ando. So we have a sample. Like this. I was working. I was working. So this is the path of the verb to be. I was working with ing. Then we have another one, you were playing. He was talking. And then she was working. It was playing. We were talking. And they were working again. Tenemos oraciones simples ahí de cómo vamos a utilizar el pasado del verbo to be con lo que es la forma ing. Vamos a tomar el was y where, que es el pasado del verbo to be. Was y where, dependiendo del pronombre que tenemos. Then we are going to take the verb and we are going to transform into given. Vamos a agarrar el verbo, lo vamos a transformar al ing. Le vamos a agregar el ing al final. Y vamos a tener nuestra eh, estructura completa. So, we use the past continuous to talk about the past. Obviously, we are talking about past, but in this case, we have this um, structure that is uh, going to explain some of the things that we did in the past. There is something which happened before and after another action. So we are talking about past, but we are talking about a specific action. And the first one is to talk about something that happened after another action. Estamos hablando de que algo pasó después de otra acción. Y 
before and after another action. And we have the example. And it says, the children were, do were doing their homework when I got home. The children were doing when I got home. So in the case we are talking about that when I got home, I um, tell the children that they need to do the homework. In esa situación, yo llegué a casa, los niños empezaron a trabajar en su tarea. Una cosa que pasó después de otra. So, when if we are just talking about a uh, past, we can say, the children did the homework when I got home. Los niños hicieron su tarea cuando llegué a casa, es que ya la completaron. Yo llegué, ellos ya habían terminado de hacer su tarea. Pero en la primera, the children were doing their homework when I got home. Hicieron su tarea cuando yo llegué a casa. O sea, tuve que llegar yo para ayudarlos a que hicieran la tarea. This use of the past continuous is very common at the beginning of a story. The other day, I was waiting for a bus when? Last week, I was driving to work. Esta estructura la utilizamos más que todo cuando contamos algo que nos pasó. So we have the two examples of the story, and we have the other day. I was waiting for a bus when, when I see a cab running from the street, and I uh, decide that I want to have that cab in my house. So I am telling a story. Then we have the other example. Last week, last week as I was driving, it worked. I called my mom and she said that she was sick. So I decided that I need to buy some uh, medicine for my mom and go to her house. Then we are going to use this structure for something that happened before and after a specific time. Then we have a sample. It was eight o'clock. It was eight o'clock. I was writing a letter. Another use for this structure is to show that something. Continue for some time. And it says, my hand 
was acting. Everyone was shouting. Así que tenemos estos otros usos. Cuando algo sucede antes y después de un tiempo en específico. Tenemos el ejemplo. Ah, it was 8 o'clock. Eran las 8 p.m. Las 8 en punto. I was writing a letter. Estaba escribiendo una carta. Primero pasó lo del tiempo. It was 8 o'clock. Y luego aparezco yo escribiendo una carta. Then we have another um, use for this structure. Para mostrar que algo continuó por algún tiempo. O sea, que algo tuvo una continuidad un poco larga. My hair was acting. Mi cabeza estaba doliendo. And then everyone was shouting. Mi cabeza estaba doliendo. Todo el mundo estaba gritando. Another use. Tenemos otro uso. For something that happened again and again. Por algo que sucede otra vez y otra vez y otra vez. And we have, I was practicing every day, three times a day. I was practicing three, every day, three times a day. The next one, they were meeting secretly after school. And the last one, they were always quarreling. Another use, we first, we show, change, or grow. Utilizamos también esta estructura con verbos que muestran cambio o crecimiento. And we have the example. It says, the children were growing up quickly. Their English was improving. My hair was going gray. And the last one, the town was changing quickly.
So in this case, when uh, I find this kind of, they are not like mistakes. They are just like, um, how can we say it? It's like a different way in which we can write those words depending on the uh, place in which uh, we are. So in that case, gray, we can uh, change it for gray with that letter. So it's not like a mistake. It's depending on the on the on the place that we are. And it says we don't normally use the past continue with a stated verb. We use the past simple. Uh, there are like a group of verbs in which we are not going to use this um, this ing form. Hay un grupo de eh, verbos que no vamos a utilizar con el ing, que son los stated verbs o los verbos estáticos, que representan sentimientos y cosas así que no pueden ser cambiados o no pueden ser utilizados con el continuous. So now, I will give you time to write some sentences using the present, uh, the, I mean, the simple past and the simple, or the past continue. We're going to write five sentences, just a five sentence. Vamos a escribir cinco oraciones con las dos estructuras, con el simple past y con el past continue. De lo que ustedes quieran. Whatever is the topic that you're going to use. Then, when you have your five sentences, you're going to see or write the sentences in the past. And I will make a list of sentences that you are creating. Vamos a crear cinco oraciones con los dos eh, tiempos que hemos visto. Y luego vamos a hacer una lista de oraciones que ustedes han creado. So, I will give you time to write your sentences. Mm -hmm.
while you are working on your sentences, I just want to say something. Um, you need to remember that you have access to the platform in which you are uh, working on the exercises related to the topics that we are uh, learning on the sessions. So remember that you have to complete um, section number one and two in the first week. That is just something that we like you to do. But if you want to work in more than one or two sections um, on the platform, it's okay. You need to work on the things that you want. Um, but remember that you need to work on the platform because as you can see, we are ending the first week. And we have just three more weeks, if you can uh, think that. We have a lot of time, but at the end, uh, time flies, and uh, we are not going to have enough time to uh, complete the uh, exercises in the platform. So uh, when you have time, work on the platform and complete uh, the section. Así que trabajen en la plataforma cuando tengan tiempo, se pueden adelantar y trabajar las secciones que ustedes quieran, los ejercicios que ustedes quieran, eh, para que no vayan a tener problemas al final y se vayan a quedar sin tiempo. In the chat, we were not put the, the sentences right. Tell me. In the chat, we're gonna put the sentences right. Yes, you can do it in the chat. Okay. Also, if you have it, you can write in the chat, and I will write in the document. Okay. Okay.
Okay, we have the first one and we are going to write it in the document. So let's see. She wanted to learn French. Okay, that's good. Number two, he smokes a lot. You are right, 10 minutes late. They study in my class last semester. He answered all the questions. Okay, I A to process the last night. Good. He drank coffee yesterday. I bought a new car. They did a trip to the park. Sandra went to Paris last year. Yeah, in this case, we're going to have a like this. When you're clean, This bedroom yesterday. My child broke the plate. The kids finish their homework. My mom cooks dinner. My mom cooks dinner. The cat slept in my bed. Mm -hmm. I travel to Europe. My brother studying law. Mm -hmm. I worked yesterday. I went to play soccer. In this case, we can make it simpler. I played soccer. 
I ate pizza one week ago. My brother broke this cell phone. I mean, I. My mother baked a cake yesterday. They were improving at the service. Improving the service. He wasn't saying enough. He wasn't saying enough. We were looking for a new restaurant. We were paying too much for the service. Okay. We were walking in the park. My uncle, sister, my grandparents. I went to the beach last vacation. My sister said that that is something bad. They were in California last summer. To say I got a prize when I was in school. Okay. I was having my dinner before the class started. My dinner. I have like a lot of uh, sentences, so I, I'm going to write some of them, but I'm going to uh, read uh, the whole messages. Then we have my grandparents were living in my aunt's house. My cousin's daughter was crying. I was studying her for final exams. Richard and Maria were playing a video game. Then we have 
The telephone was ringing so loud. So loud. They were running together. She was taking a shower when I came. It was raining. When my mom called, oh, there's a whole sentence. It was raining when my mom called me. Okay. He was sleeping when her girlfriend kissed him. It was raining all night. Rose was traveling for Europe last summer. My brother was taking English class last month. They were working so hard. Sarah was cleaning the house all day. We were swimming all day. The neighbors were dancing at night, all night. They were practicing ballet last summer. Okay, we have some uh, examples, some uh, sentences that you create using both of these structures. It says Maria was working when the earthquake started, okay? Okay, good. So we have here the list of sentences that you create using the structure that we have for simple past and for past continuous. I'm going to send right now some images to the group because um, we need to talk about the the adverse for creating stories in that case or we can say that the topic is adverse for telling stories you know that we are using the adverb to connect to um, modify verbs phrases uh, adjectives and another verb so in that case um, we can use those adverbs to tell stories. In the case, it's not like something fantastic. It's not like we are going to uh, create a magical story. It's when we are talking about something that happened in our daily life. So I will send to you these images that contain um, some examples of the um, of the sentences that we are uh, creating. So I will send uh, the uh, images to the group. Let me see. I see. So in the images, you will find one specific use for the advert. For example, in the number one, it says, what is an advert? And explain what is an advert. And we have adverbs of manner and a question. En las imágenes vamos a encontrar una pregunta que eh, se utiliza con esos adverbios que aparecen ahí. Y nos aparecen la lista de adverbios, por ejemplo, los adverbios de, de manera, los adverbios de lugar, adverbios de tiempo, adverbios de frecuencia, adverbios of certainty. Nos va a aparecer una lista de palabras que podemos utilizar con esa, ese tipo de, ad, de adverbs 
And we are going to have some uh, sentences. So if you can see the images that, that I sent to you, you can find first, one is an adverb, and it says, adverbs are the words that describe or modify verbs, adjectives, and other adverbs. That is something that we already know. Then we have number one, adverbs of manner. They are answering the question, how? Then we have the, um, the words, for example, beautifully, beautifully. And it says, she speaks Italian beautifully. Then we have carefully, you must drive your car carefully. That is the, the sentence that we can create with those words. Then we have well. The job has been done well. Quietly. She sat next to him and listening quietly. Accidentally. He accidentally scheduled two classes at the same time. Carefully, she could hear him whistling cheerfully in the garden. So we can create sentences to express an idea or a story of something that happened. Then we have number two, adverbs of place that answer the question, where? We have abroad. They were living and working abroad. In el extranjero, fuera del país, we can say. Abroad, we call here, post, post Steps in the morning above. Beyond. When I see those mountains, I wonder what is beyond. Away. The zoo is three miles away. Here. I be. I will be waiting here. There. Uh, Ivana has lived there beyond the eels all her life. Then we have number three adverbs of time that answer the question. When, after, we have the first uh, word, after, Mr. Jane can meet you next week on or the week after. Before, I'm sure I've seen you before. Currently, Vivian is currently learning to dance tango. So, in that images, you can find a lot of words that function as adverbs that we can use to tell a story of something that happened in our life. So, en estas imágenes ya tenemos palabras o adverbs que podemos utilizar y también ejemplos de cómo ponerlos en práctica. Así que ahí están las imágenes para que ustedes lean los ejemplos. So, remember that we are going to have classes the next Monday. Y la próxima semana vamos a trabajar de lunes a jueves, no de martes a viernes. Because the uh, specific time for the session is from Monday. So we are going to see each other tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow I mean, I'm not good at it. We are going to see each other on Monday. And I hope that, that you have a really good night and a really good weekend. So see you in the next session. Bye. 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 Bye.